Modern exoteric history books record only one or at most two things about Pythagoras. The first is Euclid's 47th proposition in his Elements. However, only the originally 3, 4, 5 model of this axiom can really be attributed to Pythagoras directly. Another fact we can state from collectively accepted history is the fact Pythagoras formed a cult that believed all is number, even though this quote to describe their belief can only be attributed to Aristotle and not to anyone who counted themselves as a member of the Pythagorean cult. So, while everyone knows that Pythagoras can be credited with the Pythagorean theorem triangle, and that he believed all is number, in truth neither of these beliefs about him is factually accurate. Pythagoras may have learned of the Pythagorean theorem triangle, either from the Babylonian mathematicians while a prisoner there, or else from the Chinese Zhu Bi Zhuan Jing while living in Hindustan. Likewise, Aristotle's assertion that Pythagoras believed all is number is in the context of his denouncing their beliefs, alike the manner of the early Christian fathers who denounced the heretical beliefs of the Gnostics. So, if we know nothing about Pythagoras from the exoteric schools that teach us about him, we must delve into esoteric teachings to learn more about his actual teachings to his cult, the Pythagorean worshippers of math and numbers. The school of Pythagoras in Croton was based on two levels of initiation. The first group of his personal students became the first group of his school's teachers, and they in turn taught the second class of Pythagoreans. The outer school of second class students was called the Mathematicoi, and the inner school of Pythagorean teachers and his personal disciples was called the Akusmaticoi. The Mathematicoi studied mathematics and were called philosophers, meaning seekers of wisdom, and the Akusmatica kept Pythagoras' personal moral sayings and were considered sages for those who had found wisdom already. While Pythagoras was alive, he served as the dean of his school in Croton, Italy. However, when he died and his school was banished as a terrorist cult, the Akusmaticoi and the Mathematicoi parted ways. The Akusmaticoi took a vow of silence and did not consider the Mathematicoi true Pythagoreans. Since that time, many great thinkers throughout history have belonged to the esoteric inner school of Pythagoras, the Akusmaticoi, yet have also publicly denounced those who practice number theories and mathematics. The remaining texts of the earliest Akusmaticoi reveal the Pythagorean origination of the keeping of moral axioms in a list and of attributing them all to a single source, even though many different people may have said them. This genre of wisdom literature or mysticism was later employed in such works as the Gnostic Apocryphal Gospel of Thomas and the Dhammapada of the Buddha. In particular, the teachings of Pythagoras' own Akusmaticoi moral axioms on reincarnation confirm his originating the Hermetic Trismegistus cults Asclepian literature, which itself would serve as the moral foundation of Christ's Sermon on the Mount. The Akusmaticoi kept sayings of two kinds, religious, quotes and descriptions of gods, and moral, sayings on what is the best way for man to live. The school of the Mathematicoi was as complex a university devoted to multiple studies and philosophical idealisms as was later attributed by Plato to Socrates. It consisted of five separate sections, including the Akusmaticoi teachers themselves. The four wings of Mathematicoi learned philosophy, including ethics and physics, polymath, including arithmetic and geometry, music theory, including the Tetractus and subcontrary scales, and astronomy, including astrology and Sumbola, or the recording and interpretation of omens. According to the cosmology of the Mathematicoi, particularly to Philolos, the first generation of Pythagorean cult member to publish his works in Croton some 30 years after Pythagoras' death, there are two forms of number that comprise all there is. The first kind is even numbers, 
and these indicate rotation around in a clockwise direction, and are called unlimiteds. The second kind is odd numbers, indicating a counterclockwise orientation for rotation, and called by Philolos limiters. The odd limiters represent exterior influences in our environment that shape and determine our short-term fates and ultimate destinies. The even unlimiteds represent interior mental ideas that we can apply to and invisibly overlap to co-create with reality. At the center of the Pythagorean cosmos was the hearth, which represented one surrounding zero. Thus, harmonia followed in the form of the number two, and three was the first number of the mathematical age.